Good afternoon and welcome to you all. My name is Pastor John Nickith, and I've served with this congregation for uh, 13 and a half years, and for all of those years, I can remember a Tob sitting in that very back pew in that corner. She was a faithful and dear friend to many people in this congregation. I remember her smile. Uh, she used to call me Abuna, which I think meant pastor in her language. Um, and I was shocked and very saddened to hear the news of what happened um, with the car accident back in South Sudan. Um, during times like this, it's, it's always hard to say goodbye to somebody that we love. When it happens unexpectedly and we weren't able to be there to say what we needed to say, that's even harder. Um, and so I don't pretend to know what you're going through, but I want you to know that you are welcome here, that we love you. This was her church and this is your church. And we are honored that you are here today to bid her farewell. I know that her services in South Sudan took place last Saturday. We wanted to have them at the same time, but with the blizzard last week, we were unable to do that, so we are doing them today. And I think we're joined virtually um, by people uh, on YouTube who may be all over the world. Uh, we welcome you to this gathering as well. Let's take a moment to acknowledge God's presence in this space and in each one of us as we prepare to give thanks for the life of our dear sister in Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation, who comforts us in our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Amen. In the waters of baptism, a tab was clothed with Jesus Christ. In the day of his coming, she shall be clothed with glory. Let us pray. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and our everlasting hope, we worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister, Atab. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. See, I am going to bring them from the lands of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. And among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. With consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd keeps a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and he has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. 
They shall come and sing aloud on the heights of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock of the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry, for I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for their sorrow. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you, if you have one of the little bulletins, to read responsively with me the 23rd Psalm. If you would read the words that are in bold print, please. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, Let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alle, alleluia, 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 alle, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and had revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And you may be seated. I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest places of the earth. I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in which they shall not stumble. Beloved sisters and brothers in Christ, like so many of God's people over the centuries, I know that the South Sudanese community much like the Israelites, are a community in diaspora, scattered, as it were, all across the world. There are some of you who have made a home here in America. Perhaps you came as an immigrant or as a refugee, leaving behind what was familiar, but at times dangerous, for a land that was brand new, but strange. But there are also members of your family, loved ones, friends, who live on the other side of the world, whom you rarely get to see and for whom 
America seems a very foreign place, but who are still connected to you because they are your people, your elders, your ancestors, your spiritual fathers and mothers who at times had a foot in both worlds, who called both places home, who were like a bridge between two very different places. Now we know that one day, as God promised, we will all be led back home to our Father's house, to a common shared home, where there will be no more division or war or famine or violence. We know that there will be consolation and rest, like the prophet Jeremiah foretells. But until that day, I know that your community relied on people like our sister Atab to keep us all connected, grounded in who you are, your heritage, and to look over you as your spiritual mother. I know that's a role that she cherished. She had traveled back home to South Sudan at the beginning of the pandemic to reconnect with that part of her life, to be on the land, to see people who were dear to her, and she was making preparations to return back here to her second home when she tragically passed away. As I said at the beginning, it's so painful when we do not get to say goodbye in the way we would have wanted. But we also know by faith that she is still very much here and will always be. That letter to the Hebrews says that at all times we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses so that we can run the race set before us. I know that Atab was a witness to Jesus during her life here on earth, and she remains a witness now. Although she is hidden from our sight, she is in that great communion of saints that no one can number. Her kindness, her smile, the way she would clasp your hand with both of her hands in a kind of embrace, they will still echo in this place and in our memories. And when we gather at the altar to share in the feast of victory of our God, she will be gathered with us at that table which stretches through all time and space, all the way to the eternal homeland to which God will ultimately gather each one of us who are still temporarily scattered on this earth. I wish I had been better able to communicate with Atab in her language. We had difficulty speaking sometimes, and I know that the English language was a struggle for her, as it is for many people. And although she was a grown woman, an elder of this community, and not a child, as that reading said, I did sometimes think of her when I would hear that gospel, where Jesus says that knowing him and following him is not a matter of saying the right words or even being able to articulate your faith in words that other people understand. It's about knowing in your heart that you are God's beloved child that you have been chosen and accepted as a member of his family. And Atab knew that. She was and is a witness to that. And she has found eternal refuge in the arms of Jesus who will hold her safe forever. And she calls to us this day, both in her native tongue and in that universal language of Pentecost, which everyone can understand, inviting us to come and join her one day at the feast. And one day we will. We will see her again. And until then, we pray, may heaven rejoice to welcome you Dear sister, may you lay down every burden at the feet of the one who made you and loved you your whole life through. May your days of traveling be over as you rest in paradise forever with all your elders and the saints before you. May your memory be a blessing. And let us say, 
Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite forward uh, whatever members of the community would like to speak. I know that um, it is traditional to have her, um, her biography read, and if there's anybody else who wanted to share a memory or speak, I invite you to come forward at this time. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Moses Agil, and I am uh, Atap's son-in-law. Mama Atap was born in 1966 in Marialvai Fayam, Awul West County, Northern Barakazal State, in the country of South Sudan. She belonged to a clan called Pahol in Marialvai. A yard east. She was the daughter of late Sultan Kenyang Lual and Akodi. She was born and she, she has four siblings, three surviving and one that has passed. Three sisters and one brother. The sisters are Abun Kenyang Lual, Angong Kenyang Lual, and Nyanjok Kinyangwal, who is not with us, and her only surviving brother, Lual Kinyangwal. Mama Tap was married to Bang Machamangui in the village called Ashoro, also part of Will West County. They were blessed with eight children, wonderful children. Their names are Nimeda Bang Macham, the oldest Abu Bang Macham, who is here with us. Karang Bang Macham, also here with us. Adut Bang Macham, who passed away at infancy. Achol Bang Macham, also here with us. Deng Bang Macham in South Sudan. Alek Bang Macham, also here and her younger son, the last born, Macham Bang Macham, sitting back there. Atap and her, and her four children came to the United States of America in 2002 to seek a better life and opportunity for her family. She became a member of First Lutheran Church in Lynch, and she followed the word and the name of our Lord Christ Jesus. Atap passed away peacefully surrounded by her loved ones on January 23, 2022, in Awil, Northern Baragazal State, South Sudan. As a son-in-law, I would say that uh, it was really painful for us who are here because we were not there. We haven't seen her in more than a year and we were not there to at least you know, hear her last word or talk to her. What I would miss about her the most is you know, her big heart, love you know, for her family and anyone that she knows, uh, her sincerity and ability to assert you know, her point when one goes astray, all in the name of love and caring for all. That, those are the things that I would miss dearly. And I, I think for all of us that are here, uh, we will dearly miss her. Thanks for coming. believe that there is someone who was going to share a piece of music or to lead us in song. If, if so, I invite you to come forward at this time. Maybe we'll do that downstairs later. Okay.
In the peace of God, let us pray. God of mercy, Lord of life, you have made us in your image to reflect your truth and light. We give you thanks for Atab, for the grace and mercy she received from you, and for the memories we treasure this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You promise eternal life to all who believe. Remember your servant Atab and bring her and all who rest in Christ into the fullness of your reign where all has been forgiven and death is no more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your mighty power brings joy out of grief and life out of death. Look in mercy on all who mourn this day. Give us patient faith in times of sorrow. Strengthen us with the knowledge of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death and by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come shall ever be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the words that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please stand as you're able. Brothers and sisters, let us commend a tab to the arms of God, our maker, and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant atop. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a soul of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. May the Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord's face shine upon her with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon her with favor and give her peace. Amen. May choirs of angels escort you into paradise. And at your arrival, may the martyrs receive and welcome you. May they bring you home into the holy city, Jerusalem. May the holy angels welcome you. And with Lazarus, who lived in poverty, may you have everlasting rest. Rest eternal, grant her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May Atab and all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. It is to each of us, then, that the living memories of Atab's life are now committed. To our hearts and minds go the enduring remembrance of her journey among us. As we conclude this service, as we take our memories with us, let us also take a deeper understanding that our lives are brief and precious. And let us go with a renewed commitment to live as fully as possible. 
and may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. The family invites you uh, downstairs to Luther Hall for a meal and some fellowship uh, after the conclusion of the service today. There are stairs in the corner near the door where you arrived. You can go straight downstairs. Um, there are restrooms down there as well. Thank you once again for being here today to give thanks for Atab's life, to support her family in their grief, and to commend her to the love of God. I want you each to know that we will be praying for you uh, in our congregation uh, and, and giving thanks for Atab's life as we continue. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.